Yo, what's up guys? Chase the Bro here. Welcome back to another Elden Ring Weapon Showcase. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Celebrant's Rib Break, a spear that actually gets pretty good scaling with a few different infusions. I decided to go with the Dexterity build for today though, as it does give me access to the Keen Infusion, the Lightning Infusion, and the Cold Infusion, as the Cold Infusion on this weapon actually gets the Dexterity scaling, not the Strength scaling. As for the stats, we have 58 Vigor, I do enjoy a high health pool. We have 29 Endurance because it's the minimum weight load I need for all the weapons, armor, and talismans that I plan to showcase for today. And then we have the rest of the points poured into Dexterity, giving us 68 Dexterity with an AR of 509 when one-handed and 502 when two-handed using the Keen Infusion. Although I'm going to be swapping between the infusions for the duels and invasions, you'll see the Keen, the Lightning, and the Cold probably used today. As for the choice of talismans, I'm going to be running the Shard of Alexander to boost all the different Ashes of War. We have the Spear Talisman to enhance the counter-attack damage on our thrusting weapon, our Spears are thrusting weapons. And then we have the Crimson Armor Medallion plus 2 for the HP boost, and the Urge Saver plus 2 for the HP Stamina and Equip Load boost. As for the moveset of the Rib Break, it is a Spear, so it does get the Forward Thrust Light Attack Chain, the Heavy Attack as well as a Forward Thrust, followed by another Forward Thrust as well. Although if you choose to fully charge the first Heavy Attack, you actually do run before doing the initial Thrust, giving it a little bit more range. The follow-up, however, does not change depending on if you fully charge the secondary version or not. The Running Light Attack is a Diagonal Slash, and the Running Heavy, the Forward Thrust. I feel like I use the Running Light a little bit more when I'm fighting Outnumbered, because then I can hit multiple opponents, and the Running Heavy is better against one opponent where I can just get Roll Catches much easier. The Jumping Light and the Jumping Heavy. I definitely use the Jumping Light quite a lot more. Has better range. I can delay it towards the end of the jump to get Roll Catches as well, because they might roll at the peak of my jump thinking I'm going to do an attack, and then you can just punish the roll that way. The Backstep Running Attack is a Diagonal Slash, pretty similar to the regular Running Attack. You just swing the weapon from a different direction. The rolling and the crouch attack of the upward slash. I find this pretty useful when your opponent's always rolling towards you. When you're fighting with a spear, you find your opponent's rolling towards you because they don't want to get hit by the extended range of the spear, which is correct. They will roll to the left or to the right of you or try to get behind you. And this can be a good mix-up just because you hit from around you. It's easier to land if they're rolling towards you. Now, taking a look at the dual-wield moveset, the dual light attack chain are just double thrusts. Pretty similar speed to the regular R1 as well. So whether you choose to do the light attack or the dual light attack, the speed and range is pretty similar, but the damage output on the dual-wield moveset is far superior. Especially if you're running any type of status build-up, the dual spears are just going to build that up so much faster than a single spear. The running dual-wield attack is a double thrust. It does really high damage, and honestly, if you happen to land it and your opponent panic rolls, you can get a roll catch really easily off a second running dual-wield attack as well. The jumping do with attack is consecutive thrusts. Spears are pretty susceptible to parries, so you definitely want to be mixing in jump attacks to throw off your opponent's timing. The backstep running attack is a thrust followed by a double thrust. You can use this towards your opponent. If they dodge the initial thrust, you can try to manually aim the second one to hit them afterwards. And then we have the rolling and the crouch do wield attack, which is another double thrust. You can definitely mix that into the moveset with the neutral do wield lights as well. If you happen to stun your opponent from that, you can crouch towards them. Go for the double thrust as well. The Celebrant's Rib Break is also a regular smoothing stone upgrade weapon, so you do have access to many different Ashes of War. I'll be using quite a lot throughout the showcase. I'm starting off with Impaling Thrust. I never really used this. Wanted to try it out. And then in the offhand, we have the Beast Roar for the long range punish. But yeah, that's all I really have to say about the weapon. Let's just see how it performs in the duels and in the invasions. All right, jumping into our first battle, we have Sekiro Ripoff. Hello there. Oh, I'll give myself a buff. Do you also dabble in the crab, sir? Yes, yes, you do. All right, rocking the Naga Kiba. He's got a little bit. He wants to break my Ritual Shield Talisman. We're not going to allow that to happen easily. Okay, well, now I think he did break it. But that's okay. We have the boosted Ash of War now. Playing it safe. I think he is light rolling though. That was a good trade with the Ash of War, honestly. Um, let's see. Maybe we can get a little bit more range with the running L1. Has a little bit more thrust to it. <laughs> okay. Go for the regular heavy as a roll catch. Oh, wow, that has a little bit more range than you would honestly think. The perfume! <laughs> Alright, let's use our ranged Ash of War then. I think that'll be a little bit better. Oh, he wasn't expecting it, but we did not catch him off guard. All right, he does have a few Nagakibas, though. One has the Unsheath. The other has... Oh, wait, oh, we popped the bubble tier. Okay, okay. I was wondering. <laughs> I like the random use of the daggers, though. Pretty cool. Man, light roll is so far. <laughs> Still so weird for me for... Ah, yeah, to see that. <sighs> there, he popped my bubble tier, but we did get the hit off. Honestly, it works pretty well, though. He's going in for, like, a bait hit, and then he's using the Ash of War after the roll. Works really good. I think it's useful. We could try for the double hit now. Go for the roll catch. Oh, not enough range, really. 
Yeah, I don't think you can really roll catch lay roll easily. You have to like run towards it. That's the only way. I can't do it from like a neutral attack. Very fun fight though. Very good use of the Nagakiba. Moving on to our next opponent, we have Link. Hello, Link. It's been a few days. How have you been? <laughs> All right, Link has a great sword in hand and a great sword on back. All right, let's see what else Link has to offer in the build. We're using Giant Hunt, and I also have a Lightning Infused Spear this time around. I wanted to try it out, see the damage difference. The Keen one gets really great scaling. Oh, I thought that was, that was great. Oh, I wanted to proc the Frostbite so I didn't get hit. There we go. I want to try to stun uh, so we can get a, a scare into Giant Hunt, maybe. That's a possibility. Um, whoop. Ah, I need to actually land the stun though first. Oh, that's so weird. What the hell? Okay, it, it, it hit Link from behind and it, it sent Link in front of me. <laughs> that looked so wonky. <laughs> Oh my god, that's funny. Oh, that would have maybe been a good opportunity for the jump attack, yeah. No! My failed backstab attempts! <laughs> okay, we also have the lightning strike to mix it up as well. Um, what? What? Got a hit off there. Maybe a follow-up R1. Oh, wait, that was so weird. <laughs> Two very weird interactions. <laughs> The giant hunt one was the most baffling though. Like the hitbox goes around you. I don't think I've ever seen that. Very fun fight though, Link. Up next, we have Geralt the Grave. Hello there. Do wielding great axes. Hello, Geralt. How are you? Hey! Both have uh, the exact same weapon in each hand. That's funny. Both do wielding the same ones. <laughs> I got my dual spears. You got your dual great axes. All right. The jumping attack is go bleed great axes. That's an interesting one. Probably pretty useful, actually. That almost bled me in one hit, I'm going to be honest. That's a little bit on the scary side. I want to do this to try to throw Geralt off. Make him think we don't have, like, any... Oh! Oh, God, that almost didn't, didn't expect another jumping attack there. So we can, like, stun and roll catch into this. There we go. I feel like the mix-ups are powerful. When you don't know Giant Hunt's coming, then it's a little bit more effective. Jumping light! Oh, he hadn't popped the bubbles here yet. Oh, he's got the two different, like, scream ashes of war as well. The first backstab, roll catch. Yeah, but not enough damage. Interesting. Very fun fight, Geralt. I bet you that jump attack would have been devastating if it hit, though, because it did more than 50% of my bleed, I believe. And the damage I put on jump attacks in general, if you got, like, a blood proc with that, it'd be very effective. Jumping into our next battle, we have Rock. And we've had some pretty good fights in the showcase series with Rock. I see them here from time to time. Uh, rocking a Claymore this time, though, that's different. Usually it's a Faith build, I believe. This could be a Strength build variant. And I'm rocking uh, an interesting weapon. <laughs> oh yes, the Faith buff, that's right. The, the I don't know if I bounce off it when I'm two-handing the weapon. I don't think I do. So my light attack doesn't, that's good. Um, we could try to land a roll catch with the uh, Giant Hunt. I need to stun, though. I, I think he has enough poise that my, my light attack will not stun. Oh. Well, I don't often do that out of nowhere, but it seemed like you might have the time to do it if they start their jump attack. I was able to punish it with it, so if you start it right away, maybe you can punish it. Very fun fight, though, Rock. Uh, I, yeah, that was weird. <laughs> Jumping into our next battle, we have Shallow God. Hello there. Wielding a straight sword and shield setup. Okay, that's interesting. Probably magic boost by the looks of his uh, physics. So he's got a an int build of some kind. Indeed. <laughs> I, uh, you know what? That kind of gave him cover to be a wizard right there. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> we just dodge these at first. Well, this comes out pretty quick. He wants to parry, I think. I don't think he can parry the dual jump attack, which is kind of nice for me, to be honest. Just in case. Oh! Enough poise to tank the double spear. We didn't poise break him yet. Dodge that. We got a frostbite proc, and then we popped the bubble tier as well. <laughs> oh. 
I want to try using Ice Spear on the shield. See how good it can guard break to this day. Oh, well, we, we didn't get the guard break, but <laughs> we did get the finish of the battle. It still does a lot of damage. Uh, it'd be interesting to see the stamina damage the beginning of this does now. Very fun fight, though. Moving on to our next opponent, we have uh, Goonhild, maybe? Hello there. How are you? Do wielding what seems like daggers from here. Um, don't know the exact ones, though. Maybe... Oh? Oh, it's the Ash of War that, like... Yeah, yeah. I always forget the name of that Ash of War, but I, it does chip you down even if you roll. If it happens to catch you in the iframes, you still get the, like, burning effect and lose your HP. Try Chilling Mist. Get some Frostbite in there. And then we can go for the the difference. Like, I wonder at close range, can I backstab that? I don't even... I'm intrigued now. I hope they go for it a little bit more. <laughs> Interesting. Let's try to go buy it. No, uh, it's hard to roll buy it, honestly. I don't know if I can. The more they do it, though, the more I'll be able to attempt it, I suppose. Let's say, what's the choice here? Fast roll, I kind of need to be doing running attacks. I can't get any roll catches otherwise. Oh, the Ash of War hit so hard. Interesting, though. I don't really know. I guess the more I uh, attempt that against uh, that Dagger Ash of War, the more I'll find out. Very fun fight, though. Jumping into our final battle, we have Wade. Hello, Wade. How are you, man? Do wielding what looks like great swords. I'll give you a bow as well. Just to, you know buff going. Uh, what great swords does Wade have, though? Wade has Vanish Knight great swords? Probably. They are indeed Vanish Knight great swords. Okay. Let's try to get the Chilling Mist going. Get the Frostbite build up. I wonder how good the Frostbite build up is. Well, not do wielding, but using that uh, attack. Oh, I mean, I think his might honestly be a little bit better. It's hard to say. Let's see. Three hits for us, probably, before a Frostbite proc? Yeah. That seemed to be the case. One do wield attack almost took me out in terms of frostbite. Oh, I timed that badly. We did get the bubble tier proc. Uh, we can switch our Ashes of War now as well. Oh, I thought I did. I didn't. <laughs> I was already holding one in that hand. Whoa. All right, frostbite could be devastating, so I do have to watch out. Nice, we did roll the frostbite. That's basically what the goal was there. Whenever you're fighting a stat proc build, as long as you roll the damage proc, it shouldn't be too bad. Spinning slash. That's kind of different on a greatsword. Oh, well, he doesn't like to... Oh, he went for the follow-up that one time. Other than that, though, I don't think he's going to. I think he want to land that Ash of War as a finish, but I don't think we're going to... That would have been a good time to go for it. I think he would have hit the final one there. If you would have did the other half of the Ash of War, I, was, I kind of would have traded into it, I think. Boop. Jump attacks can be so weird in terms of like where the iframes are. Oh, kind of rolled into it. Very fun fight though, Wade. That was some good back and forth. Like the spacing there, the finishes. Very fun fight. Alright, now let me test these out in Invasions. All right, jumping into the first invasion. We are in the Brace of the Halig Tree. We've invaded Key, or... Yeah, I guess Key. Oh, but, but, what, what? Are they in the boss fight? Or I guess above is a possibility as well. But they look like they're below. I'm going to use the Recusant Finger just to see... Where it takes me. What the heck? That guy had 400 HP. Wait. I can't warp. I think they are in the boss fight. And it's just not letting me use the, the finger because I shouldn't be in this world in general. That's so weird. They are in there. What the? Hey. I'm over here. Look at me. <laughs> I'm over here. <laughs> I can't see in there, but I'm kind of here for the outcome. Oh, okay. Well, 
that's happened to me in the past in Dark Souls 3 where you'd invade like when they're entering the boss fight. I've never had that happen in Elden Ring, so that's that's really interesting. Well, all right, now that we had that first interesting invasion, here we are. We're on kill invaders. Hey, they're actually runarked. Or not runarked, sorry, uh, tauntered tongued. Survive there for a second, Red. I'm here with you. It's Bensworth. Hello, wizard. Hello. Jeez. I mean, it's not going to be the effect of the first time. You got to, like, test it first. I'm just spam it eight times. <laughs> Well, this isn't going to be a long one. <laughs> okay. Uh, the wizard didn't like close range. I'm here to surprise everyone. I like that they're using the taunter tongue, though. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Then maybe we'll just use the one spear. Actually, there was one thing I wanted to test out with my choice of Ash of here. Oh my god, it's like this PvE wants me. I wish I could help him kill it. Die! <laughs> I wish I could hurt it. Wait, oh. Did the other red return home? Hello there. Alright, I wanted to test out something anyway. Hello. So, let's see. I wanted to see if we could somehow combo that. Oh, no, I didn't mean to attack. I wanted the two hand. That's unfortunate. I want to combo this. Yeah, uh, it won't work. I was thinking maybe there's some Ash of Wars that can possibly combo together in some ways, but that didn't seem like it. That wasn't one of them. Although Gravitas seemed ultra effective against our friend here. I don't know why. I don't know why he ran into the, the enemy, actually. We were, like, fighting so far away from it. I think it was a bad play to go towards it. Yeah, fast roll still is faster than running, but uh, it does consume stamina, at least. <laughs> It's really hard to catch fast roll. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. That was personal. It, it took a detour for me. Did you see that? <laughs> it like curved specifically around to hit me. That's really funny. This is taking a little bit too long. <laughs> Let's just do this. Oh, that was a good blood. You should pressure now. See, now, now would have been a good time for you to pressure, but... Oh, boy. This is chaos. <laughs> okay, well, I guess I'll just wait for the assist and punish it at this point. Get some chips here and there, but... <laughs> oh, that was weird. I really thought that was a roll catch. I'm still behind you. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably, it'd be more effective if you just swung it. You'd probably get a bleed proc. Yeah, there you go. See? Still not going to let you heal for free, though. <laughs> Very fun fight, though. That damn PvE enemy. <laughs> Moving on to our next invasion. We are in Liurnia, but in a cave. Oh, this is the... I don't even know where this is. Oh, I don't remember the name of this area, but I remember where it is. I've never really invaded here, though. Hello there, comic guy. How are you? A faith build. Oh, I like that, actually. Okay, let's, let's start off with this one. Oh, we're, yeah. <laughs> a duel in a cave. All right. So he's just tauntered tongue, I guess. Or his teammate fell. Okay, we got a nice lightning strike there. Taking a bad trade. That's not actually too bad, to be honest. Oh, I might, my backstab grab didn't even, like, attempt to do it. Woo! Oh, he didn't do the follow-up. Aw. Would have liked that. Lightning! <laughs> okay, he's prepared for the lightning now. Can I backstab punish that? Not easily. Something, dual dumping, or er, dual jumping attacks have really good recovery for, like, how good they are, to be honest. The rock there. I have this to counter that. So, like, even if I'm there right on time, I usually won't get the backstab on them. That's just how effective they are. Oh! What about a rolling attack? Yeah, it's still hard to punish in general. I just have really good recovery. Oop. Great dodges here, though, bro. I think the poison will be the end of Comic Guy, though, sadly. Oh, I guess my hit was, but... 
That made it a really aggressive fight. We had to just keep it closer the whole time. Very fun fight, man. Interesting. All right, now we're in the consecrated snowfield. I honestly just love how it's basically wax dust. So cool. Hello there, guys. How are you? I just get to go everywhere, just everywhere and anywhere I want. Well, not that I want specifically. Wizard, I can strafe that though. Oh, I love that change. Oh, so helpful that you don't just automatically get chip damaged. It's such a blessing. All right, so we got them summoning another cooperator. I'm assuming that means that we're gonna be 3v1. At first it kind of looked like some honor duel, but now, now it's not looking that way. Oh, I got hit by one, so I do have to run like kind of back and to the right of it, which is kind of, it's interesting. <laughs> oh, my thunder will, rivers of blood, at least I can't poke through the shield. Okay. How many wizards do you have though? Okay, so. That one, I think, has a moon veil. I'm pretty sure on that. Oh. Yeah, that's a moon veil. <laughs> Definitely a moon veil. All right. Let's do this and drink our flask. Some better regen going here. I need a little bit of non-openness to the wizard. Yeah, like these rocks will do wonderfully. I can then run around at least. To strafe that. That's mostly my concern. Oh, these are the giant enemies. Okay. This can hit me though. That's a bad sign. I don't like that. And it's like... Okay, it became blinding in here. We, we can kind of use that to isolate the phantoms though. Just huge. Nice. Heal. We got rid of the moon veiler. That's really all we needed. <laughs> okay, the snowstorm actually worked to my benefit. They kind of lost sight of me for a second, so they couldn't 3v1 pressure for like, like, 10 seconds. Is this survivable? I they're jumping down a cliff, but I don't even know if it's okay. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> the cover of the snowstorm honestly worked so wonderfully. That's hilarious. Wait, did, really? You give up? Like, you guys 3v1 and then at the end you just... Nothing? <laughs> okay, there we go. At least fight. Yeah, like, then you have a chance. I don't know. Well, fun fight, though. All right, those are all the battles that I have for you guys for today with the Celebrant's Rib Break. I hope everyone enjoyed the showcase. Once again, there's my stats on the right, the armor that I wore, the talismans that I utilized throughout the showcase, and of course, keep throwing your weapon recommendations below. I really do appreciate it. I love reading all the recommendations. But yeah, until the next video, I'll see you guys all later. Goodbye, goodbye, and thanks for watching. Goodbye.